Alright guys, it's your favourite bushcraft brum here, Brumcraft, and that's brum with an R. Uh, there's three of us out today, this is Al, uh, he's a sergeant instructor in the Army Cadet Force, and uh, Tom is holding the camera, you're going to know anyway. Hi guys. So We're doing a 48 hour survival challenge called Brusca 48, uh, Brusca mm. means Britain, US, Canada. There's a, quite a few people that's going to do it, I don't know how many is going to film it, uh, but basically the rules are, uh, you come out with minimal kit uh, and you try and rely on the natural uh, resources that are around in the forest. So we're out with minimal kit, we haven't got sleeping bags, tents, hammocks, tarps, anything like that. Uh, we've got some hunting and trapping stuff, we've got a pot, we've got some water, we've got minimal food. Um, yeah, so it's the brainchild of a guy called Woodsman661 who's on Twitter and basically he just challenged me to it so I thought why not. So, join us. Alright guys, what we've got is a little bit of hawthorn. And with the hawthorn, you can see the little spikes on it. Just there. And what you can use those spikes for is an improvised fishing hook. So you can just break it off. Once you break it off, you can tie a little bit of natural cordage onto it or a little bit of your fishing line onto it. And as you can see, you've got quite an effective little spike there. It's a little bit too soft for using as your bow drill. Using the pans later. It's true, that's stuff. Uh, if you saw it wet, it can't drink from it as long as you yeah, squeeze it. Yeah. yeah, you can if you want. <laughs> okay, guys, there's our first bit of food. Found some blackberries, what's left over of them. Yeah. Gorse. All right then. Don't think there was any left, to be honest. I didn't think he was going to share it. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's quite bitter, but I think we need more bitters in our diet. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> See if we've got a plastic bag, we'll take that with us, we can use some of it for bait. There we go. Sweet chestnuts. Some sweet chestnuts. Yeah. Valuable resource of a pine tree. Fantastic, your little, pine, nice actually, yeah. little pine nuts on the end. Break them off and eat them. Fruity. Yeah, they are nice. Nice, yeah. nice and fruity, aren't they? Oh, look a little bit further up the branch on this one. See little bubbles? Yeah. Yeah, that contains all your, all your pine resin. It's sticky as well, mm -hmm. There you go. You can see the smoke coming off it as well, from the pine. Mm. Happy with that? That's cool. Yeah, nice bit of pine resin. Let's grab some of the needles for some tea later as well. Mm. That's uh, a Lansky World Legal Knife. 2.75 inch blade, 550C stainless steel. Completely legal. And they're about 20 quid I think. So is that non-locking then? It's non-locking, yeah, yeah. But you can see, you know, you can just see how strong it is and how wide it is. You could baton with that. Um, obviously nothing big, but it's a hefty knife for a legal knife. You probably don't want to take it through the airport. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Lansky World uh, Legal Urban Tactical Knife.
type of um, sleeping equipment that I've brought with me is one of these which is the Sol Escape Bivy and Sol Standing Saw um, standing for Survive Outdoors Longer apparently. Um, this one is the OD Green you can get them in orange generally the orange one is the one that's a little bit more common but after hunting around on the internet I got this one from Amazon I think it was and it was actually cheaper than the orange one so I thought that's good. This one retails out at about 40 quid um, they're foil lined on the inside, I'll just show you the inside of the bag which is virtually the same as the inside of the, the main bivy itself. So you've got like your mylar blankets on the inside of that. Uh, this one they class as being breathable and semi water resistant or semi water repellent which is, is good enough for me, hopefully it won't rain this weekend but we're intending on building an half decent shelter to accommodate for that fact anyway. Uh, however, with these, they reckon that they reflect 70% of your body heat back towards you. So, as I say, that's, this is the only thing I've got to sleep in this weekend. No roll mat, nothing else, no poncho, no uh, top or anything like that. Just this one item. So, by the end of the weekend, I will tell you whether it's worth purchasing or whether it's worth throwing in the bin. All good. It does, yeah. Just made this little uh, leather dump pouch and it works on the same sort of principle as your, your Maxpedition roly-poly sort of bag it will roll up and then clip onto itself as you can see at the moment we've been collecting tinder on the way in here uh, various bits and bobs so we've got something in it but basically uh, it's a soft leather pouch that I've made and I've made it so it, it fits onto any type of belt just pops stood it on and I've put a draw cord around the top so that when the bag's full up you can keep your tinder in one place without it falling out. Uh, the cordage that I've used on it as well is jute twine and anybody that knows anything about uh, fire lighting will know that jute twine is, is also used for fire lighting techniques. It will it'll spark from a very CM rod. Uh, there we go, time to try out the new Bushcraft Essentials mini stove. Did you steal that out of a doll's house? <laughs> Looks like it, doesn't it? It's one of the the smallest the smallest stoves ever made, apparently. I just bought it because it was cute. <laughs> because I'd, <laughs> I'd never seen a cooker so small and cute in my life, so I thought I'll have that. We'll try it out down the forest. I think that's that's another one. Look. And it's basically one and Tom Downing one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you need the protein? Yeah, this would be a great source of protein. <laughs> <laughs> Got some field mint. So I think we're gonna make some mint tea. That is really strong as well. Yeah. Really strong flavours, yeah. yeah. Probably not in the best mix, but That'll do. It's a bear trap, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's the size of I a trap. I'm in Alaska. You know when I went across yeah. Alaska? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when I went uh, bear trapping. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How's your frostbite now? You got that sorted? I just lopped the toes off, man. I don't need them. No, they are, they're, they're overrated, aren't they, toes? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I've got some on the other foot. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done three lean twos interconnecting. And we've covered it with hazel and fern. So we're just going to put the final layers over the top now, and this is it. We've got a couple of uh, ducks in there that was kindly gifted to Tom uh, yesterday. Uh, in the spirit of transparency, we didn't catch them. So we're going to uh, prepare them in a bit and cook them over the fire. Just making a, a spit for the ducks. We 
we're doing two cross pieces of hazel, we're doing that times two with a spit across the middle. So we're just staking out the hazel now. It'll work. Should be a small resource. Yeah. Okay, well, another one of Tom's tips, if you're going to nail a post into the ground, place your foot against the base of the, uh, of the post itself, lean your knee into it so that you can steady the pole, and then drive it in. Guys, have you noticed that we haven't beveled these? Because oh. we don't really, we're rough and ready, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. There's no finesse. No, no finesse at all. Okay, if you're doing this with two people, Alistair can lean his foot up against the hole that side. I can lean up against the wood this side. It helps brace the stick before you drive it into the ground. It helps concentrate the power straight the way down through the stick, rather than getting any flex. I've got that night light like mine, but I don't feel sick. Oh, you'd, be, you'd be surprised, you know, what yeah. you see when it's wrong. i tell you what, guys, people are going to think I'm a one-trick pony with these upside-down fires. Yeah. <laughs> they work there, don't they? They're easy. Yeah, they are, yeah. Well, the idea is, in the situation that we're in at the moment, we want to be able to light it so we can find our camp because we've got to go off and try and find some better wood because some of this ain't exactly the best for burning it might spit a little bit yeah um, it's a bit punky as well at the bottom yeah, it's a bit punky. guys we've just been to get some water and i'll just show you this this is um a nalgene wide mouth bottle um mcq bushcraft gave me the link to this so thanks for that mike yeah. um made I've made the uh, bale wire the same as per his video. Uh, the only difference is I don't really connect it to the top. I've made it long enough so you can just actually twist it round and slip it under there. So I don't actually need to attach the top. But yeah, this is a, a mosquito net as well, which um, used to filter the debris at the top. So these are awesome things as well, the mosquito net, head nets, uh, stuff sacks, and you can use them to filter the debris as well, so you can do three things with it, and they're, abs they're really lightweight as well, so good thing to have. So this is all the material that we found earlier when we came in here. All the various bits of tinder, dry grass, etc. And gas is... Is that a bit of char cloth, was it, guys? It's a bit of uh, char cloth and that um, thistle that we found. Yeah. Grass is a bit damp. I'll just leave it build up a bit of heat. Huh? There we go, we have fire using a traditional sealing flint. Start with boys, just deep up them, deep over them, and anything on the breast, yeah. work it the opposite way, pulling up the pill. Like we just want to keep going. Put it the other way, then. Yeah, let's pull it back up, Bill. 
And you can normally get your thumb in underneath it and twist using your forefinger against the breast. Once you start getting down to the tail end, guys, mm. if you start pulling the feathers the opposite way. Okay. Yep. Now if you pull if you pull the feathers back up. That way? Yep. It's all in there. Don't worry about the head too much. We're going to cut that off in a bit. Yeah. A little bit stripped there. So what you do is you find the, the bend in the leg. Cut the tenons on the front. Cut the tenons on the back. Snap it. Wind them around like that. Let it come off and there. That's your sinew. You know, so like when you read about it in your SAS magazines and all that sort of stuff and everything that you're on telly, you use the sinew for, you know, cordage and all that. Well, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. so, as you can see, it's quite fibrous, and you can twist it up. You do exactly the same with the wing. So where it comes in, that's about there. You can slice it down there. Back. And that's what he's been eating, look. Mm. See what's come out of the throat. Can't pull him. There you go. Cool. No, no, no. <laughs> That's you scraping in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. Turn it round, do the same the other side and yeah, grab all the heart out and anything that's left out, left over in there. Everything out, guys. Everything's out, man. Fantastic. I just want to lick my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> okay, guys, absolutely looking good. So the idea now then is that we finish off cleaning them all up, getting all the rest of the feathers off them and everything wash them through, clean them all out, and uh, get them on the spit. Yeah, they're all alcoholics, and you see them, like you used to see them. Unless you're getting that lot of square sink down. Oh my God. And oh, this is our sleeping kit. I've got a Mylar blanket, um, and a British Army Gore-Tex bivvy on the top, and just a few leaves underneath. And I've made a makeshift pillow out of leaves, uh, and an old uh, Bergen liner. Bush I think it's lovely, do you know what I mean? Because for once, there's somewhere that's selling everything in one place. Spider. Centipede. Wood lies. Wood lies. Slug. All on one tree. It's like a nursery video. Yeah. Is that a harvest man? Yeah. He's uh, another good centipede. Yes, he is, but they seem like really hard. Hard wearing. Yeah, yeah. And so. Been My idea was like, I'd like, been, had like, like, wrote like a kit list out as such. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, man. Oh my god. Mm. Oh man. Nice sunny day, and literally as we went up, it was getting cooler and cooler. Yeah. And you got to the top, and there's still like, not lots of snow, but like little bits of snow, like dotted.
guys, it's morning now, I'm the first one up. Um, I slept like a baby. A baby of ADHD that cried all night. No, I slept okay actually. Um, I'm really grateful for having like a down jacket that um, I've got. An out kit jacket. Uh, it's awesome, man. I'm really uh, glad I bought this. And uh, I'm really thankful, really, that I bought that bivy bag and uh, had a mylar blanket to put on the deck because it would have been a cold night otherwise. Tom, infield review of the bivy then. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> infield review of the bivy. Come on. Any good? Um, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, thanks for that, mate. That was really good. <laughs> yeah, it was deep. <laughs> I had a really good sleep anyway, slept like a baby. Um, Tom didn't, Tom was um, kept trying to uh, get me to spoon him all night and give him a cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really sure of his motive, so I declined. <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, long grain rice, I'm going to add the meat. <laughs> You've been long grain rice for breakfast? Long grain rice for breakfast. Okay, mate. Right. I'm what, what are you going to have for dinner, Weetos? <laughs> <laughs> Got some oats and some trail mix, which I'm going to mix together. Um, I'm going to try that mint that we gathered yesterday as well. In the rice? Yeah, try that with the rice as well. Oh dear. Good luck. Experimentation. <laughs> Can't be worse than porridge and uh, Tabasco sauce. <laughs> so you've been eating porridge and Tabasco sauce? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You've got, a, you've got an extraordinary palate, you haven't you? <laughs> and it had sugar in as well. <laughs> yeah. Tries. This one's for Zed Outdoors. Zed, you need to get this backpack, man. It's got your name on it. All right, guys, we've just uh, set up four squirrel traps. Uh, we're just practicing, really. Uh, we've took them down, and now we're off for a yomp. Birch polypore. Yeah, that would be. That's a sterile strip. That's fine. Oh, cheers, man. So, yeah, just leave the top off. And that's it. Alright guys, uh, I just want to take this chance, uh, we're chilling out now, we're having a brew and stuff. I want to do a couple of shout outs actually. Um, the first one is to the rest of the mad crew that aren't here. Uh, it's Paul, Mikey, the big guy, um, Mad Mickey and Van Cleef. Wicked guys to know, you know, we have some good fun. I haven't been part of it for too long, but yeah. Hope you like the videos we've done so far, so keep an eye out for these guys, they're awesome. Um, the second one is Z Outdoors. Basically, if you're into bushcraft and you don't follow Z Outdoors, you need to basically close your YouTube account, man, because you ain't doing it right. I mean, the guy's hilarious. He does some amazing stuff. He's having a great journey, you know, and he's inviting you along with him as well. And you've got to follow him. 
Uh, the third one as well is uh, Mac Tightwad. He's uh, an ex-soldier, he's got some ace stories, uh, he's, he's a proper laugh and uh, what I like about him is he makes a lot of his own stuff, he's always improvising, making stuff, things that don't work, he makes them work, he customises it, so yeah he's a really good guy to follow as well, he's part of the community now, so follow him as well. So now guys, keep up the good work. Hi right, guys, we're still uh, unable to ID these. Um, it's a toss up at the moment between dogwood berries or slows. Uh, we know it's not, we know they're too small for damsons and uh, it's not nightshade. So, don't know what they are. If anyone knows, uh, let me know. Get all them little white hairs off because they'll. Um, your problems with your digestion. It tastes like um really citrusy like uh cross between a lemon and an orange. Just found some yew berries. Um I think you can actually eat the berries uh, but the rest of the tree is poisonous and I think the seeds are poisonous as well but you could have some balls to eat them. Hi right, guys, we're having a tramp through the forest, we're just chilling out now. Uh, we've grabbed a load of wild edibles um, and got some pine cones as well, which we're uh, going to use as kindling. So yeah, we're going to head back in a bit. Um, Tom's got some bannock mix, so he's going to um, have a go at that. And then we're going to try and get some um, insects together and try and go fishing with them. We're going to try some different insects. Uh, just see if it works. Okay guys, navigation is a very important part of any type of wilderness survival. If you don't know navigation, you'll get yourself lost and you'll have to use more skills than what you think that you'll need to stay alive or to get to um, safety. So learn a few navigational tips and it's going to help you on all your travels. Now basically what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just lining the map up with the ground and with the compass. So my compass is pointing north that means the very top of my map is also pointing north so everything that I can see now on that map is lining up with the ground as we can see it at the moment. Now, on this section of the map we've got a little mine marked here. We're not on any path, we're actually wild navving at the moment. However, we can still locate ourselves even though we're wild navving and we've got no paths. We can see that mine through the trees just over there. Okay. So what we're basically going to do now is just line the compass up with the direction of the travel arrow pointing towards that mine that we can see in front of us and line it up on the map. Now, your location, or our location, is anywhere between that line and that original path down the bottom. There's a little spring there and just down in this bank here we can see that little spring so we know that our position is located right here in the middle of this section of forest and from there we want to get to the path which is at the top of the hill so we can now measure from this point to the path at the top of the hill using our compass and that works out at approximately 100 metres now 100 metres will take you one and a half minutes normally if you're walking on a flat surface. However, because we're going uphill, you have to take Naismith's rule into account, which is, which is adding one minute for every contour that you're climbing uphill. So in our case, there's four contours between where we are to the path. So that's immediately four minutes, plus what it would normally take you of a minute and a half. So we know that that journey now is gonna take us five and a half minutes and we'll reach that path and then from there we can reposition ourselves and carry on with our journey. Okay, let's go.
There you go. There's 90 seconds out, mate. Oh, You're gonna have to go back to school. I mean, all I can do is apologise to the viewers. Uh, apologise to my friends and family. I really do try hard, but... You I'm, did try your best. I'm just going to have to... Fast. We've walked too fast. <laughs> yeah. And we... What was it? Ten seconds too quick. These people are relying on you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Honestly. Oh, come here. I'm about to lip the I don't We found another man to these... Uh, Beetle carcasses. If anyone knows what these are, uh, let me know. We think it's boar, but we just we don't know. So if you know, let me know. Another one of Tom's tips: get yourself some field mint or wild mint. Crush all the leaves up in your hand. Add a little bit of water. It up, roll it on you, and that works as an insect repellent. Because it's approaching evening time, and we'll have some midges and muzzies coming out at some point soon, just like that. And at the same time, it helps clean your hands a little bit. Cool. And this guy is. is this is field mint. <laughs> Natural no, yeah. Alright guys, just made some of the insect repellent uh, that Tom just showed you. Uh, basically you've got to rub the rub the mint leaves around until the juice is brown. So that's what we've done anyway and I smell gorgeous. So if there's anyone here from a pharmaceutical company that wants to buy that recipe, um, <laughs> contact me and Tom. Patent's going to be how much? Oh, a couple yeah. of million. Yeah. A couple of million yeah, to start least. with. Yeah. 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 Yeah, anyway, uh, Brumcraft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brumcraft and Tom. Brumcraft and Tom. 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I did record it. Really? Yeah, but I mean, it's only, it's only recording, dude. I mean, you, you know, you know. <laughs> how can you justify that? All how right. can you justify that? I mean. Okay. Ball. People get mixed up with uh, puff balls. Uh -huh. <laughs> Some monkey one in him. Nah, that's the normal one. That is. This is a shaggy cap. These are edible. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think. But yeah, I don't really touch fungi. I think it's a bit of a bit of Russian roulette, really. Yeah. And uh, I'm no expert on it. But yeah, that's a shaggy cap. These are. Uh, obviously nettles, perennial weed. Um, you don't really want to be eating these around June, July time because they contain cystoliths, um, which apparently can cause kidney problems. Um, usually they're in flower around that time, so if they're in flower you want to steer clear of them. But I will say the jury's out on that one because um, people have different views on it. But just to be on the safe side I wouldn't um, I wouldn't eat them when they're in flower, but they've been through the flower now. And you want to pick these, these bits at the top. And obviously just boil them up to neutralise the sting. There's a one beetle under that frog carrying it. How amazing is that? It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. They've got some strength in them beetles. Oh, yeah, them froggy. I'll you for a bit of bait. Tom's going to season this with Cajun spice. Yes. And uh, sp spit roast it. Yes. And just about pick him up on the camera. 
Oh, there's a row there. Yeah. Right guys, we finally got it going with the cramp balls. Took a while though because the uh, the grass is quite wet. Right, this is our casa. We've all done the same thing and we've uh, folded our mylar blankets over to reflect the heat. It's going to be a cold one tonight, isn't it, lad? It certainly is. Yeah. You can feel the temperature difference when we started coming back down into the valley. It already started getting quite cold. So, just reinforced a few, yeah. few things tonight. Just to ensure we've got a nice stock of uh, wood here. And we've got some oak in there which will be burned through the night. So, we'll be alright, won't we, lads? Yeah, Get some bobs, but I'm just going to go for a, a plain bread. Yeah, mint bread just don't do it for me. Yeah. I'm doing it this way. I'm going to create a bit of an oven, a bit of a camp oven. And hopefully it won't burn. This is a uh, it's like a blow poker, allows you to get close into the fire so that you can get air right to the bottom of your coals. It's just a piece of fern, a stem of a fern or bracken, it's also known. And I've basically just cleaned it out with a thin piece of hazel, and that, that's a workable straw. Right guys, there's a little tip um, to increase your blowing power on your fire, basically to direct it um, better and concentrate it in a smaller place. You basically get your uh, fingers and make a little diamond shape like that and just blow through that. That's called the Venturi effect. There we go, guys. A little bit of camp bread. Right, guys, it's the uh, second morning now. I've had another good night's sleep. Uh, yeah, it's the first time I've just slept on the deck with no form of. Uh, uh, air mattress or, or anything like that. I've just basically slept on the floor and it's been absolutely fine, man. <coughs> I had two good nights sleep. Uh, the purpose of this really for me was I wanted to put a new survival kit together. And it's no good sort of just buying a ready-made survival kit. I think you've got to go out there for a few days and see what you do and don't sort of really need. Uh, so yeah, a couple of things I'm going to put in my kit now is alcohol gel, uh, which I needed, uh, which Owl lent me uh, after we prepared that duck, and also uh, contact lens uh, travel kit. You know, if you can't see, uh, you're going to be no good to anyone. So that's a couple of things I'm going to put in. Uh, also, we uh, we put some lines out yesterday and it wasn't successful, so I'm going to actually create a fishing kit but I'm going to do it I'm not going to use a ready-made one I'm going to uh, go to an angling shop and get the proper shot and a disgorger and floats and just do it properly really and just see if it's you know if it's more success you've got guys out there angling on the lake that spend hundreds of pounds on kit that are there all night they don't get a bite so you know they're gonna have more chance than you are so if at least if he gets the right kit you know you're gonna have more luck uh, also as well, Tom brought the ducks ducks with him. It would have been really, really, really easy uh, 
to pick some up at the lake, but obviously we can't. We don't own the land. But yeah, I think the, well, the reason was that he wanted to show us how to prepare the duck. You know, it was a good skill. So yeah, that's why we did that anyway. But we've lived mainly on uh, wild edibles. Yesterday we spent the day in blackberries, um, nettles, we've been having pine tea, we've had sorrel. And that's really what we ate for most of yesterday. And we just mixed it with the food we already had. And we've been absolutely fine for two days with minimal food and minimal kit. So uh, another thing, guys, we've been using this field guide, Collins Gem. Uh, it's it's been all right, but the problem is it only tells you what you can eat, not what you shouldn't eat, which isn't always that useful. Um, and there's also things we've picked up along the way, which is not in here. What was it? Plantain, I don't think, is in here. Cat um, yeah, greater reed mace, not in here. Um, rib wart, is it? So there's certain things really that are out there that we've picked up that are not in here. So it's not really the field guide I'm going to use going forward. But if anyone knows of any uh, small ones like this that perhaps are a bit more suitable, uh, a bit more comprehensive, let me know. Al, have you enjoyed your first uh, bushcraft experience? It's been absolutely awesome. Put you on the spot now, Alloy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's been absolutely awesome. Um, first time I've ever done anything like this and it's been first of many, definitely. And uh, it's been a weekend of first from eating wild edibles uh, to uh, doing the duck. Uh, it's been absolutely tremendous experience, absolutely loved it. So yeah, it's been awesome. Cracking, mate, you're a natural. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> And that's just straight off the, the coals that are already there from, from last night. Yep. I suppose because like they're underneath and ashes on top, it kind of keeps them warm, doesn't it? If you've uh, got one of these GI cups or a Crusader cup, or even a titanium cup, and you haven't got any uh, gloves with you, this is uh, a quick way of just handling it. Just get two bits of hazel. Right Al, your initiation's complete now. Yeah. So uh, welcome to the Mad Crew. Thanks welcome to the Mad Crew. Cheers mate. Thank no you much. Thank you. Well done. Cheers buddy. Yeah. Now you've got to buy us a breakfast now. <laughs> That's the second part of the initiation. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> right, we've come to the end of our uh, uh, two day um, survival challenge for Brusca 48. This is the way we do it anyway. We've had a good crack. Hope yep. you enjoyed the video. So this is Gaz, Al and Tom signing out, please like and subscribe.